Okay, so this guide is gonna be a basic guide on crafting in last epoch. I'm gonna keep it very basic. I'm not gonna get into like complicated crafts. You can't really make anything complicated. Uh, it's mostly based on chance if you wanna make any crazy stuff. Uh, but I'm, get, I'm just gonna show you uh, how this system works and how you can craft and upgrade your equipment while leveling and get you to the end game. If you're playing the campaign, I highly recommend as soon as you unlock the workbench, you start upgrading your gear. Uh, it's very simple and very easy. So I'm gonna show you two types of crafts uh, based on like normal items and uniques. There's two different ways you can upgrade items in this game. Uh, the normal way with the forge uh, for normal items and by normal, I mean uh, normal or rare or uh, experimental items. And for uniques, you can do some crafting on them, but there's a different way. And I'm going to show you how to do that later on. But for normal items or like any uh, non-unique or set item, you're going to be using the forge. This is the forge. You can go to it if you reach this area or in any uh, campsite, I guess. Uh, or you can just press the F button and unlock it anywhere. So you can be uh, at the chest here and you just craft your items it's easy just press f okay so i have a, i have an item here it's a rare item so this uh, might this might seem complicated but it, it's really not it's very simple okay so your items have prefixes and suffixes uh, as you can see there's uh on the item here there's one prefix melee void damage and two suffixes increase stun damage uh, Increase stun chance and chance to ignite on heads. And you can see it here on the on the bench. You can see here there is one prefix and at the top here two suffixes. And you can see here there's an empty prefix. So the simplest way to upgrade your uh, your item. So let's say this item uh, you find it during the campaign and it's your main weapon. And you want to upgrade it. The simplest way to upgrade it is just increasing the stats on it so you put it here and leave this alone you don't need any of this i'm gonna show you why so this is the most basic thing you can do so let's say you do mostly void damage melee void damage and you want to upgrade this it's at plus 19 now it's a tier 4 so as you can see melee void damage plus 19 and under it there's a tier it says tier 4 so the tiers for the affixes start from one one is the lowest to five so five is normally the highest it's the highest you can go with crafting there's you can't get higher than five uh with experimental affixes but y these are drop only so like this item here i have you can see it in uh, purple you can't craft this uh, if you can see here it says drop only tier six so this is a drop only you can't craft on this, you can't upgrade it, you can't upgrade everything else. But as you can see, it's tier 6, I can't do anything with this. Uh, but for normal items like this, you have these uh, prefixes and suffixes, and you want to upgrade them. So how do you do that? So this uh, void damage is tier 4. So what we can do is press this little button here. You don't need to have anything here, and you don't need any of this. If you do have anything here by accident, let's say this, and you want to remove it, you just click the button here and click clear, and it will remove it. So you want to upgrade this, you just press the arrow up button. And this, what this will do, you can see here, this changed into a shard icon, affix shard. Now this shard is added melee void damage, and it will upgrade this to higher tier. So if I upgrade this now, if I click upgrade, it's plus 19 now, tier 4, and if I click this, it will use a shard that I have. You can see view materials here. You can see at the right how many shards you have for each affix, or you can see it here, like how many shards. I have 3,000 shards. Yeah, you can see here I have 8. Well, actually, I have 9. So if I... Yeah, I have 9. So if I click this, it will use 1, and I will have 8. So... If I click this now, it's a tier 5. 22 me melee void damage, it's at max craftable, so 
five is the max you can craft. So this is the most basic way to upgrade your items. You just click on the arrow on the affix that you want to upgrade. And if you have the shard, just click upgrade and it will upgrade it. It will uh, move it to a higher tier. Now, if you notice uh, at the item, like at the, it says 29 uh, forging potential, like here. And you can see it here, 29 forging potential. What this is, this is very, very important. This is how much you can craft on the item. So this is the durable crafting durability. There's a limit. So it will, as you craft on the item, it will go down. And if you, if, if it goes down to zero, you can no longer craft on the item. So if you craft and it reaches zero, that means that you are done. Like you cannot do anything else on the item. So it's either a perfect item that you crafted perfectly or it is completely bricked and you can't do anything with it. So you want to be careful about how much you can craft. You don't want to like randomly click things if, if you have a good base for an item. So if I want to like upgrade this, if I click this, it will use a shard. It will go to like, I think it's tier one. No, it's tier two. So if I click this, it will go to tier three. It will use a shard. I have 15. Tier three. So it's upgraded now, but it was 29. As you can see here, increased stun chance because we upgraded this and minus two for gym potential. So it was 29, now it's 27. So if I keep upgrading this, now minus nine it will keep going down. So if I upgrade it again, it will go to tier five, the maximum, but I will not have a lot of for gym potential. So I might want to upgrade this or I might have a, another prefix that I want to upgrade. So you have to be careful here. Now, what you can do to prevent this like going down very quickly so you can craft more on the item. There's something called glyphs in the game, uh, these glyphs. So if you click here, you have access to them. Uh, so I'm gonna go through them one by one. So you have this, a uh, glyph of hope, modifies the outcome of a craft granting it a 25% chance to have no foraging potential cost. So if I use this, so I have this here, and if I wanna upgrade this, it will use this shard again. And if I click this, there's a 25% chance it will not use a crafting, it will not use crafting potential. It's a low chance, 25%, but it's worth using. Like you can see, I have a lot, it's like it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's worth using, you shouldn't just do this unless you really don't care about the item uh, and they're easy to get, just use this so you can craft more on the item. So click this, it used five. So you can see that how much it uses is random. I, I don't really know exactly uh, how random it is. The first time I used it, minus two, then minus nine, now minus five. So it is a bit random how much it uses, but I think, I think it uses more as you upgrade the item more. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. So that's the basic thing you can do to upgrade your items. You just click on the arrow. You have nothing here. Click on the arrow. This will use crafting potential. If it goes down to zero, you can no longer craft. You can have 25% chance to not use it, to not to lower the crafting potential by using a glyph of hope, the first glyph, this first glyph here. Now let's talk about the other glyphs. So this, these glyphs modify what happens when you upgrade an item. So the first one, of course, there's a chance to not use crafting potential. And let's see this one. Glyph of Chaos randomly changes uh, the upgraded affix to a different one that can spawn on the item type. It cannot change a prefix into a suffix. So if you have this here, and if you want to upgrade chance, uh, chance to ignite, there's a chance that this suffix is gonna be changed into a different suffix. And if you wanna see like ha uh, which suffixes uh, you can have on this item, you can just clear this and press here and look at the suffixes here and you can see. Can't be apl uh, currently applied, so I have this. Cannot be applied. And you can see here all the suffixes that you can have uh, on the items. So you can see what I have applied and it says here it cannot be applied. And you can see here upgrade and reroll. 
so change to freeze rate multiplier. And you can see at the bottom here, there's a there. Even though I don't have Glyph of Hope, there is a random chance to not use forging potential. So you see, critical success, pro uh, preserved forging potential, and crafting materials. So even the crafting materials, I saved up. So that's nice. So you can see here, freeze rate multiplier. So it changed uh, the suffix to another random suffix, and it's also it's also upgraded. So it's tier five. That's the second glyph. There's also this uh, glyph called Glyph of Order. Prevents the roll of an affix within its range, changing when it's upgraded. So what this does, so let's say you have this item here. I have 19 forging potential, so I can do some crafting on it. And I have this. And if you see here, it says uh, at the bottom, at the bottom suffix, it says uh, plus 8% critical uh, strike avoidance. And the range is from 5 to 9. So let's say I like that it's at 8. If I upgrade this, if I want to upgrade this, it's at tier 1. So it's at the lowest tier. If I upgrade this, it will go higher tier, but uh, the range will be random. It might be at the bottom of the range. It might be at the highest. But let's say, so I like where it is now at 8%, near the maximum range of 9. So if I upgrade it, it might be the lowest. So I, I might... I don't want that. I want it to stay at like very close to the highest. So this is what this glyph does, glyph of order. So if I upgrade it now, it will, you can see here, upgrade it to 13%. So this will be, if I upgrade now, I know how much it will be. It will be exactly 13%. So if I click this, it's 13%. So you can see 13, the high range is 14. So it's exactly where I want it to be. Now you don't want to use this on an on like a let's say the suffix cold resistance. It's at the lowest range. So so if you have this glyph and if you upgrade cold resistance, it would be at the lowest range of the next tier. So you don't want to use this on like this because it's gonna be at the lowest. It, it's gonna be 15. 15 is gonna be the lowest of the higher tier range. So you don't want to use this. Maybe you want to use a glyph of hope to reduce the chance that you will use a forging potential. So if you see that, if, if I have this, it's going to be 15, but if I do this, it's going to be random. It's 16, so it's better than 15. And that's the glyph of order. The next glyph is glyph of despair. Now this is for like high level crafting. Uh, as you can see, I don't have a lot. It's kind of rare. I only have five. What it does is it seals an affix. So let's say I have this. This is not a good example, but let's say I really like this. Uh, this suffix here. If I use this glyph of order, what this does, uh, there's a chance that when I upgrade this to higher tier, it will seal this suffix. So it's going to be sealed, it's going to be locked in to the item, and you can no longer upgrade it. But what it will do, it will open another uh, suffix here. So this suffix is going to be empty. This suffix is going to be at the, uh, locked in here. It's, you, uh, uh, I'm going to show you like how it looks. And you're gonna have an empty suffix to even upgrade even more. You want to use it on an affix that you really, really want. But I'm gonna use this as an example. So remember, you can, if you do this and it lo it's locked in, you can no longer upgrade it. So this is at tier two. So it's not really good. You might want to upgrade this to tier four, let's say. And then you want to use this uh, Glyph of Despair to lock it in and get it to tier 5. So you have it locked in to the item and you have an empty uh, suffix. I only have now two forge gym potential so I can't do uh, anything. So I'm just going to see if it works now. Yeah, of course, it didn't work. Okay, so let's say I want to lock in this. Let's see. If... Let's say I want to lock in uh, this health here. It's at the lowest tier, tier 1. So you, wanna, you do want to upgrade this to tier 4. And you have Glyph of Despair, so I want to lock it in. And there we go, it's locked in. Uh, at the lowest tier, so you, you really don't want to do this, but like this is how it looks. It says sealed, tier 1 health. So this is uh, kind of like a... If you played Path of Exile, it's kind of like fracturing. It's locked in, so you can see it's in uh, gold, I think. I don't know what color this is. You can see... Plus 11 health, it's at the lowest tier. So yeah, and it says sealed affix cannot be modified. So this is it, it's locked. But now I can have something else. 
that was kind of lucky because I only used one for gym potential and I got it in the first try. So now I have this, it's it's empty suffix, so I can have something else. And that's how this glyph works. Now the last glyph I don't have, you can see. But I'm gonna show you uh, what it is. Okay, so the last glyph is this called Glyph of Insight. What it does is it changes the prefix, so when you upgrade the prefix, uh, prefix into an experimental affix. It only works on gloves, boots, belts, and it does not work if the item already has an experimental affix. Now you can see here, this is kind of strange. It says the exact experimental affix it becomes and its tier are determined by the properties of the item. So this is kind of strange. And so what the item is and what properties it has is what determines uh, exactly what that experimental affix you get. So this is for like high level crafting and if you want to know more like uh, i i don't have this it says here it cannot drop so i'm not even sure like how you get it so i'm not really sure like how you get it uh but th there has been uh, like a lot of people in the community trying to figure out exactly how uh or what experimental affix you affixes you can get from this glyph and there's a lot of people like experimenting trying to figure out exactly what you get there's a lot of things that can uh there's a lot of things that go into it. I'm just going to leave the links in the description for some of the things people have been experimenting with with this glyph. So yeah, that's the final glyph. So these things modify, again, modify what happens when you upgrade. So when you click this button, what happens? Nothing can happen like this. And it will use forging potential. Or you can modify what happens. Is As you can see here, there's like empty affixes so this is very simple you just click on it and if you have the shards you can choose any affix that can uh, go on this item so for prefixes you can just if you you can see there's an empty prefix you click on it and based on what the item is and what shards i have i can just craft any prefix i want so let's say you just click here on prefixes to just see the prefixes and let's say I want to have movement speed. So just click on this and it will use one shard and click add. Again, I recommend if you have these, just use them. There's no downside to it except use it except using them. So if I click now, it did use five forging potential, but it in, it added uh, tier one movement speed. And you can see now it's uh, seven percent increased movement speed, so it it is at the maximum range of this tier. So what I can do now is use this glyph, a glyph of order, because at the it's at the max. So I can get this to tier five at the maximum range of tier five. So now it will use forging potential. There is small chance that it won't, but because I have this glyph and not the hope uh, glyph of hope, it will use most likely use. A lot of uh, forging potential but it's gonna be at the maximum range always so if I click this it's gonna be 9% as you can see here 9% it goes at tier 2 it goes from 8 to 9 so if I click this it's gonna be 11 at tier 3 it's from 10 to 11 and I have 11 and if I click this keep clicking and it's at the maximum and I don't have any forging potential so you can see 18% increased movement speed, it's at tier 5 max you can craft, and it's at the maximum range because I have this glyph. But now you can see it used 11 forging potential and it's at 0. So we did seal an item, we did seal a suffix and we added a prefix and we had one suffix open but now we don't have any forging potential. So now I can't do anything with the item, it's done, like that's it. So this item would be like bricked, like uh, so if this item is exactly what you want that's perfect like that's it you can't do anything with it if this item is not what you want if it is breaked what you can do instead of just having it in your stash in your inventory uh, instead of having it in your stash what you can do is use these modifier runes so you have items that you don't want you have items in your inventory or your stash that you really don't need is i'm gonna leave this clear for now 
as you can see here we have ruins that we can add there are different ruins this is different from glyphs these do different things so the first one as you can see it says destroy an item create a random number of affix shards containing its powers so I have this item that is bricked like I don't want this this is not what I wanted it's it's not what I wanted so instead of having it in my inventory what I'm gonna do is use this ruin ruin of shattering so this will destroy an item and it will give me some some of its uh, some of its shards so I can get back some of the items that I used in crafting and you can see I can do this without um, needing for gym potential so this will just break the item destroy it and it will give me some uh, it will give me armor shards and dexterity and movement so if I click this you can see now I got one shard of everything so it's destroyed and now I have the materials so this is what I recommend you to do this is what I recommend to do if you have an item that is completely bricked like I don't need this item I can't add anything to it this is trash so use the rune of shattering and just shatter it and get some of the shards so this is how you can get like a lot of shards. So if you have, if you picked up item during the campaign, just do this. Just use Rune of Shattering to to get some of the uh, some of the shards. You should not waste like drop items and waste them. So this is what this is what the sh uh, Rune Shattering does. So let's talk about the rest of the runes. Uh, this is the first one. It destroys an item. You get the shards back. And the next one is Rune of Refinement. Rerolls the values of all affixes on an item within its tier. So if you click on this, so I have one prefix and two suffixes. They're all at tier five. So if, if I have this and I click refine, they will all stay at tier five. If they were all at tier one, they will stay at tier one. But it will change at uh, it will change the range. So you can see now, uh, you can see the uh, the melee prefix melee void damage. It's at the low roll. It's at 25. The maximum is 26. So if I click this, it will randomly, it will randomize the numbers basically. So you can see the suffix I have now increased stun damage. That is kind of at a high roll. It's at 136. The maximum is 140. So that's really good. I don't want to change that. But let's say I mostly care about melee void damage, and I want it to be close at closer to 26. So click this. Again, if you use this, you can also have a glyph. If you're not going to use any other glyphs, use use a glyph of hope so you're not wasting uh, forging potential. So if I click this now, now you can see it's 24, it was 22. It's still not what I wanted and the increased stun chance is lower now. So this is not what I wanted, so you can click it again. Good thing that because we used glyph of hope, we didn't use any forging potential, so I can click this again. It's at the lowest roll again. <laughs> this is bad, okay. And he used one forging potential. Didn't use any forging potential now, so that's good. Okay, I'm getting bad rolls. So this is what you can do. You can just keep clicking on this, and as long as you have forging potential and enough uh, materials, enough glyphs and uh, runes, you can just try to get the perfect roll. The next glyph is this, rune of removal. So let's say you have an affix that you don't want. Maybe I don't like the stun chance and I don't and I want to remove it what this rune does is remove one random affix so it could be a prefix or a suffix you don't really know it's random I'm gonna keep using glyph of hopes just so I don't waste crafting potential I have a chance to remove uh, one affix that I don't want and perfect it removed stun chance but it used 12 forging potential so this is bad so this if I was like working at uh, if I was actually wanting this item, it would be like, it's bricked. There's nothing I can do now. So I removed the thing that I wa wanted to remove, but like I can't craft on it. This is why you always want to use Glyph of Hope if you're not using any other uh, glyphs. So this item is bricked, so what you can do is use Glyph Shattering, get, some, get back some, uh, some shards. So that item is bricked. Okay. Okay, so I have another item now. So that's what the room of removal does. Removes a random affix. And you can see like uh, at the bottom it says experimental and personal af personal affixes cannot be removed this way. I don't know what it means by person personal affixes. Maybe mean sealed affixes. I'm not sure. The next rune is rune of discovery. 
add a random tier 1 affix to all empty affix slots on an item. It has a increased chance of rolling rare affixes. So, I can't use this on this item. So let's say I have an item like this. And if I use Rune Discovery, there's only one affix, dodge rating, and there's two empty slots. If I use this rune, and remember, if you don't have any other, if you're not using any of these glyphs, use a glyph of hope if you have one. And if I click this, it will add three random ones. Now you can see, it says three random tier one affixes, but there's two slots. So it will add one more prefix. So two prefixes and one suffix. So I have this item. And if I use the rune of discovery, you can see at the bottom, it says it does not cost foraging potential, but cannot be applied to items with zero foraging potential. So you, for this item, it has 17. So you really don't need to use the glyph of hope. It's actually, if, even, if you, even if you select it, it won't use it. So that's the good thing about this item. So you can see here at the bottom, it says add three random tier one affixes. So it will add one pre two prefixes and one suffix. There's going to be another prefix here if I click on this. So it didn't use any forging potential because this glyph does not use it. And it added two prefixes and one random suffix. So this will fill up all empty, empty slots. And now, since it doesn't use uh, forging potential, you can start uh, actually upgrading. And okay, the next glyph is this. Rune of Shaping. Rerolls all implicit uh, all implicits on an item. So this item has, you can see the implicits at the top, plus 14 intelligence, it ranges from 13 to 16, and increased minion damage, it goes from uh, 36 to 66%, and increased minion health from 36% to 66%. So there, these rolls are not very high, so you can use this, this uh, rune to re-roll them and get a and hopefully get a, a higher roll. So this item does use forging potential. You can see here it uses from 1 to 25. Again, if you're not using these glyphs, use the glyph of hope and hope that you get a high roll. It used 17 forging potential. Okay, that's bad. But we get a max roll on intelligence, 16. So we got plus 16 max roll on intelligence and a high roll on minion health, but minion damage is still low. So this item is bricked. The next rune is this, Rune of Ascendance. It changes uh, the item you have into a random uh, unique item. So if I use this, I'm going to get a unique ring. So if I click this, it's going to be used all potential. So you can't do any crafting on it. So let's say you're trying to like get a specific unique. You can do this with this glyph. So if I click this, Ascend, it will be a unique ring. It used all potential, so now I can't do anything with this. And I got a unique ring. I don't think I have this one. So on to the next ruin, uh, it's called Ruin of Creation. So if you played Path of Exile, this is a mirror in this game. Uh, but it's not, so, as you can see, I have one, so it's not as rare as a mirror. It duplicates the item but reduces the forging potential of both items to zero. So if you have a, a perfect item and you want to duplicate it. So if I click this, it will duplicate this item and it will use all forging potential. Uh, I'm not going to use it on this item. Here's the thing. You can't use this on an item. No, not this. You can't use it on an item that doesn't have any forging potential. So if you have a perfect item, but it doesn't have any forging potential, you can't duplicate it. You need at least one forging potential. So let's say uh, I have this helmet here. Um, this is good for my build. So let's say I want to duplicate it and maybe once the game comes out, like you want to trade this with, to, to, with someone else. Uh, first, like you can see I have a lot of forging potential because I didn't craft on this uh, a lot. So I want to upgrade this first before I duplicate it. So, use Glyph of Hope, upgrade this, health, tier 5, perfect, and I didn't even use this, and didn't even use the Glyph of Hope. And, right now, there's nothing I can do on this item, 
before I duplicate it. And I want to duplicate it. So this item is now like a... It's not the most perfect item. But uh, let's say I want to duplicate it. So it's upgraded. It's fully upgraded. Everything's perfect. And I have this. I only have one. So... You can see at my mouse, I have an item. This is it. And here I have another item. So now it's duplicated. So I use the mirror on this item basically. And they're both zero forging potential. They're exactly the same. And I can't do anything with them. So I have one and the other one I can trade if I want to. So that's that. Okay, the last rune is called rune research. It seals an experimental affix on the item. The affix is moved to its own slot, leaving its old slot open to add the new affix. So I can't use this on this item because it doesn't have uh, any experimental affixes. So if I go uh, in my stash and look for uh, experimental, and you can see just the I have these items. It says experimental affix cannot exist on, uh, as a shard. Affix, so what I can do now is take this. Let's say this is perfect, like this affix, experimental dodge, and I want to seal it. So I, it's going to be here. I want it to be here and have this open so I can add something else. So you can use this rune of research. So this will lock this in and open this prefix. And I'm going to use this. It's going to use uh, from 1 to 20, so I'm going to use this. So I, I can, hopefully I can... So I can hopefully... Keep crafting on this. So, seal and affix. So now it's sealed. And the glyph worked. I didn't use any uh, forging potential. And now I have this open. I can add something else and keep crafting on this. So these are all the ruins and all the glyphs. These are. This is the basics of crafting in this game. You have simple ways to upgrade uh, your affixes. And you can modify the way... You can, you can add modifications to what happens when you upgrade them with glyphs and and you have ruins that modify the affixes themselves and add in uh, and if you have any open slots you can just easily click if you have shards you can just if you have the shards you can just click on the thing you want and just upgrade it it's that simple so this is for normal items for unique items, you can see here, it doesn't have forging potential, but some unique items, like the one I have here, it says one legendary potential. Uh, let's see if I have another one. Uh, and this ring that I have here, three legendary potential. So now I'm going to be talking about legendary crafting. You can't craft on here. You need to do something else. So let's do that. The type of crafting you can do on a legendary item is just combining a legendary item with an exalted item so that's the crafting you can do with a legendary item so you combine it with another item specifically an exalted item and i'm gonna show you how you need to go to a specific uh, area called uh, the temporal sanctum as you play the game uh, you you're getting keys for different like dungeons that have like different uh, mechanics and you want to go, if you want to upgrade a legendary item or a unique item, uh, you need the keys to the Temporal Sanctum. So I'm going to get this key here and right click on it and it will take you to the map. How, how awesome is that? You just click on it. You just right click and it shows you exactly where you need to go. So I'm just going to go to the Temporal Sanctum and I'm going to show you how to craft on a unique item. Okay, so I'm here at the Temporal Sanctum. And I have my key with me. And if I go here, talk to this guy if you want to. And I'm going to go into this dungeon here. So it's a dungeon. You need to get the key. Put it in. And enter. You, as you can see here, there's different levels. Uh, I don't think I've done this. I think I've only done this uh, on my offline character. As you finish uh, each tier, you unlock the next tier. Each tier here allows you to upgrade a unique item with a specific level. So for tier 1, the unique item level requirement is 50 and below. So if you have a level 60 unique item you want to upgrade here, you can't. You have to finish the Sanctum and unlock 
uh, tier two to get to upgrade a, a level 60 unique item and the final one is the most difficult one it's level 100 but it has no restrictions on uh, item uh, levels so i'm just gonna go to this one because i don't have it unlocked on this character and i'm gonna show you how you can do this so the mechanic of this dungeon is temporal shift you can see here it says temporal shift ability gained while in this dungeon so if you press d you can phase in into different like era or time or different reality i don't know how exactly it works so go in i'm just gonna go in very quickly on this okay so this is where the boss is so this is where the boss is and you want to proceed and the boss is going to be using the this time shift mechanic so be careful uh, you're going to be using it to dodge her attacks so let's go in where is she, she is. I will have it. and you can see there's something like there's a an effect on the ground that's gonna do a lot of damage so i'm just gonna get, stay here She's very easy on this, uh, she's very easy on this tier. And that's that. What's this? Okay. So now you proceed here. So after you defeat the boss, you're gonna get to this area. This is where your chest is and this is where you're gonna upgrade the legendary so this is how you upgrade a legendary item so you're gonna take the legendary item you want to upgrade that has forging uh, legendary potential so this one has one and you're gonna need an exalted weapon or like item uh with four affixes so they both need to be the same type so they're both quivers i can't put a ring here like that's not gonna work it needs to be the same and it's gonna take randomly one affix from uh this quiver and put it into this legendary so because this has one legendary potential that means that if i press this button this unique will take one affix one random affix from this quiver and this quiver will be destroyed so here i hope i get increased bow damage for example anything else is bad so let's try this so I press this and you see nothing happens so we press d to shift and this is where you get the item. Press here and let's see what, what we got. And three health on kill. So that, that was bad. And you can see it no longer has forging potential. So I got unlucky. Would have been cool if I got the 88% uh, increased damage. But that's it. That's how you upgrade the, the legendary weapons. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And... And if you have enjoyed this video, please press like. And if you want to see more Last Epoch content, be sure to subscribe because I will be posting a lot more. That's it. Thank you for watching. Take care.